Hey guys, Kevin with Gateway Worship, and today we're going to be talking about creating patches in MainStage. So first, let's define a patch. A patch is just a collection of sounds that you're going to use for its intended purpose. This can be made up of one sound, or it can be made up of accumulated multiple sounds. But it's all confined in what we call a patch. So let's get started building a patch. So to do this, in patch list, in MainStage with it open, we're going to click on this plus sign on the left column here. You're going to see an untitled patch pops up. That just means the start of the patch being created. Now we're going to go completely to the right side in channel strips. We're going to check this plus sign and now a drop down menu comes up that we can choose what we're creating. In this case, always software instrument is what we're going to select to create patches within MainStage. Down at the bottom of the window, you notice that you can select how many channels you would like to start with. In this case, we're going to start with two. So then we hit the create button. Now you see that we have two channels ready to go. Okay, so in channel one, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to input on the channel strip here and we're going to hover over instrument tab. When that happens, you see an up and down arrow will come up and when we click on that, we can now see a pull down menu of all of the instruments that are within main stage. In this case, we're going to select ESX24 because that's the sampler playback and we're going to click stereo. When this window opens up, we're going to click on this window. Another pull down menu comes down. We're going to scroll down to acoustic pianos. We're going to select the Steinway 2. It's a great piano. So now in this channel, let's make sure we have some sound. And there you go. So we have a piano sound. That's great. Okay, so let's keep going. Now in the second channel strip, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the input section, hover over instrument, the arrows pop up, click on that, this pull down menu shows up, we're going to scroll down again to ESX24, we're going to select stereo, and click this window again, pull down menu, synthesizers, synth pads, and this is a pad that I really like to use, it's called the big pad. Now on this screen you're going to see me make a couple of really quick adjustments. I'm going to get out this resonance and I'm going to take the attack and bring that down so it comes in nice and fast. And I'm also going to turn down the volume on this. It's pretty loud, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Okay, so now in our two channel strips, we have a piano and a pad. Let's play them together. And just like that, within a matter of a few minutes, we've created a brand new patch that consists of a piano and a pad. We're just getting started. We've got a lot to do to this. So let's jump in. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, if you notice at the bottom of the channel strip, that just says instrument one, instrument two. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the bottom and I'm going to rename this piano. Double click the second one and rename that one pad. That way we don't get confused on what they are and we know what to go after them later. So now that we've got that done, what we need to do is Part of sound design with making patches is we need to make sure that the patches don't overtake the platform. So in a, in a pad setting, there's a lot of frequencies that happen and then what happens is it can be too much. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start using the effects channel in the channel strips right away and we're going to hover over that menu again. We're gonna hit the up and down arrow and we're gonna scroll down to EQ, channel EQ and stereo, okay? When this pops up, you're going to notice it's just a flat line. It's not doing any work at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut some low end away, called a low cut, and we're going to cut some mid frequencies that kind of make the sound a little bit muddy. So to do that, we're going to click right here on the left side for the low cut tab. And now you're going to notice that this turned red, which means it's active. I can click and hold this and drag this backwards. And I'll drag it back to about 200 hertz. And then I'm going to come over here to around the 500 button and I'm going to pull this down. So that way I've eliminated some frequencies that would cause the sound to become very clean for front of house. Okay. So now let's pull that window down. Now I'm going to just solo that channel by clicking S on the bottom of the channel strip means solo. We will only hear the pad by itself. Now let me show you what this originally sounded like without EQ. When I turn the EQ off, you can hear the sound is way lower, way, way bigger. This might not be acceptable on the song with a team, 
That's why we use EQ. So now when I turn the EQ back on, you can hear a lot of frequencies just went away. This is what we call a clean sound. We want to make sure that the sound we're sending is clean to front of house. We'll fit in with guitars, fit in with vocals, fit in with piano, anything like that, okay? So now let's go back to the piano channel and we'll do the same thing. So we're gonna unsolo the pad channel and now we're gonna solo the piano channel. In audio effects here, we're going to hover over this tab again, do the pull down menu and we're gonna select channel EQ again. In this case with piano, we don't wanna take out all the frequencies like we did with pad. So we'll go back to low cut, we'll grab this, hold it and we'll drag it back to about 100 Hertz and then with the 500 Hertz tab, we're gonna pull it down just slightly to remove some mid-range frequencies. Now let's listen to the piano by itself. It's definitely a cleaner sound. So again, I'll pull up the EQ, I'll turn it off, we'll play it. I'll turn it back on hear the difference. It's just a little bit cleaner, not so much low end, not so much mid range, keeping the sound nice and clean. Okay. So now let's experiment while we have the piano open with a couple of more effects. I want to talk about reverb and I want to talk about delay. Okay. So in audio effects, again, we're going to hover, we're going to hit the arrows and we're now we're going to select, we're going to go down to delay. We'll take stereo delay and we'll pull that up. Now, this is going to come pretty much with a default setting. You can try that default setting and see if you like it, but the great thing is, is it's really easy to tweak. So in the delays up here in the left side, you can grab these delay knobs and if you click and hold, you can actually change the tempo of the delay, quarter note, eighth note, dotted note, whatever you want to do. In this case, we'll just do standard dotted note. So I'm going to take the output mix and I'm going to raise it up to 50% so that you can hear the, the delay on the piano. It's probably a little bit exaggerated. I probably would not go that much in a setting in a service, but for this video, I want you to be able to hear what's happening. So now watch what happens when I play the piano. And you can hear that the delay is happening. It keeps the piano going, okay? Again, a little bit exaggerated, but the fun thing is, is you can experiment with delays and how you like things to go as part of your sound design, okay? So next I wanna pull up reverb. Again, going to effects audio tab, we're gonna hover, we're gonna scroll down to reverb, we'll select silver verb, and stereo. And whenever you open up a plugin, you're always gonna see a default window. When you click on that default window, it's going to have factory settings that you can select from to just give you a good start. So I'm just gonna select ambience and that's going to just give me a, a standard setting on this. So I'm gonna turn off the delay so you can just hear the reverb right now. And again, for the sake of the video, what I'll do is I'll turn the reverb way up so that you can hear what it sounds like. Here it sounds like this. Okay, so now you can hear that we have reverb on the sound. Again, exaggerated. I'm gonna pull that back down to where I probably have it in a service setting. And I'm gonna turn the delay back on. And so now I have reverb and delay together. So let's listen. You can hear the delay that's happening. Okay, again, probably a little exaggerated, but the fun part is, is I can decide how I want it to sound. And it's really fun, especially if you're gonna sync it with tempo in a song. So now what we need to do to be able to control the piano and the pad separately, we need to now assign those faders. So to do that, we're gonna go to the middle of the screen here, click on fader one, and you're gonna see this MIDI window open up right here. The, you're telling it at this point what you want it to do. So I'm gonna select piano one, volume and for max range we're going to set these to double zero because we don't want it to be too loud so strictly just type in double zeros hit and return and now you're good to go so now we're going to hit fader two we're going to do pad 
volume, again, max range, double zero, hit return. So now with this, I can actually control these faders separately. So now you see on the screen, my faders are working independently. So now I can hit the chord and I can fade in just a pad. Now I can fade in the piano. I can fade the pad back out and just have piano. And of course, I have a main volume. I can turn it all the way down if I would like to do that. So here's some fun tricks that you can do with creating your patches. And remember, the whole goal of this is to serve the song and serve the moment. Let's have some fun.